Previously on Ash of God's Redemption Thorn and his band, having successfully rescued Macht, head towards Opacum. A stop at the water men here reveals both an unexpected ally and the presence of an ancient enemy with dark plans for Glita. Will the party make it to Opacum ahead of the invaders? There is one thing you cannot give up. Control over your own life. If only you could trade it for your loved one's lives. Alright, so we're back with Thorn Brennan. Um, actually, we're going to go to the campfire. And we've got a couple of people to chat with. So let's talk to Macht. How are you holding up, son? Can't imagine how happy I am to see you. What are you thinking about, anyway? Hey. About Mother. Or how I'll stay myself, even without the arm. About Glita becoming such a beautiful woman. I think Mother would have been proud of you, Father. <sighs> good. We'll make it to Opacum and fight the good fight for all of Burkana, while you rest and recuperate. Your grandfather will see to that. <coughs> Grandpa won't just leave me alone now. He'll crumble about how stupid I am for losing an arm. No siree. I'd rather rest up and return to the army. If the war hasn't died down by then, of course. It won't, Macht. We're in for a long war. A long reaping. <coughs> to think I haven't seen you in nearly three years. I never could find the time. Now it seems there really is no time. This war isn't about to loosen its grip on us. I see. It's not your typical war, is it, Father? I had a talk with Prince Hederlig. He seems highly educated. And he said that this reaping is unlike the others. Never a sorcery forced soldiers to attack someone's fortress. Can't say I'm well versed in the ways of misfortune, but I get the feeling the gods are specifically testing our family's limits, Macht. Now we need to make it to your grandfather. I can already picture him babysitting me, lecturing constantly. I can only hope my terrible uncle isn't around. That I cannot guarantee. Stay away should you not be so lucky. He wants nothing but your death. Mother would have given her life for you. Hasn't she, though? How'd she die? Her heart gave out. She fell prey to the reaping first. She'd been cracking and finally broke. Well, I'm looking forward to talking to you again aren't making a goody two-shoes out of me, at least. Next time, you'll be asking me to deal with Frisia alone. Can't do that. However, if you meet someone special and give me a grandson, then I'll run things my way. Alright, let's talk to Score. Want to get something off your chest, Score? Not about your ominous visions in the wasteland or being healed by the water men here. Or rather, in general. Mm. Ask away. Or should I stand here guessing whatever it is you wish to ask? Mm. Is there any way to defeat the Reapers? You mean the gods? I doubt this plague eats away at Terminium without their complicity. The gods aiding us against the Reapers are out of the question. At least the kind of gods worshipped in the temples. Making my head burst with all your ellipses. What other gods? 
means someone other than who planted the sacred stones? What are you talking about? I'd love to explain it more clearly, but I don't really know enough. I've been searching for a book. Never got hold of it. Some witch took it from right under my nose. But it seems there are gods that have nothing to do with the sacred stones. One, at least. Much good does your knowledge do if there's nobody out there to help us. What's the point of the Menhirs, then? Power. Menhirs' healing property only manifest when there's a surplus of it. Everything else is used to keep Terminium enveloped in an impenetrable wall of mist. I deciphered it all correctly, of course. There's no direct mention of it, mention of it in the books, to be sure. Oh. I've been to the Vale you're talking about. It's only death there. Nothing more. Why do they need the reaping? Why do you think there's any point to the reaping at all? Never thought you'd say that. I've been contemplating it, but still haven't found an answer. No matter who orchestrated all this, the biggest mystery still persists. Orchestrated? You're talking about the Reapers? Aren't they mere servants and harbingers of the reaping? Mm. Well, obviously they're servants. Not of the reaping itself, though. They have no master, so they're seeking one, preparing for his arrival. I can't explain it any better. There's nothing else in the scraps of information that I'd found. Hmm. I guess I learned everything I needed. Hmm. Well, I'm jealous. I'd hardly be able to say so myself. Just don't take me at my words, all right? I'm just piecing together all the scraps of knowledge I gathered during my world travels. I mean, my logic is perfectly sound. At least you seek the truth, and are asking questions. Most people don't even bother. And over to Glita. Dad, tell me about this drewer. Confused. Can't get what Maybach told me out of my head. Oh, that's right. That's where Drewer came from. Want to know about my mentor? <laughs> Remember you telling him about me? You even said he saved your life once. That day I walked beyond the edge of the world to rescue your grandfather. Drewer bestowed his power on me and stayed behind him. He died in the Vale. Or so I thought. Do you want to know how your grandfather was saved? You saved him from the all-enveloping veil. That I remember. But how did he end up there in the first place? He was trapped. But it doesn't feel like a coincidence anymore. Of course, I don't think it was actually Drewer's own doing, but somebody had a hand in it. Someone needed me to dive into the veil absorb its poison, and then have a daughter. Do you want to know who Drew actually was? <laughs> you know, if Druk used to be Drewer, then I feel Maybach's the same person too. Huh? You can hardly imagine, but if Drewer can latch on to Drukit and Maybach and somebody else cast a shadow over them, would make him sort of an abnormal being, almost like a reaper. I left her wonder, my daughter. But I thought Maybach was on our side. Hmm. Yeah, look at this. Well, you got some little binoculars, huh? Yeah, I bought them that Oh, very cool. Yep. Smaller than the earrings, so they can come. Alright, cool beans. Sure. Now we need to define where our side lies and what we should do there. Luke, 
Parts of my model plane won't come out of the sea. <sighs> okay. I'm kind of busy right now. Just tell me how, how to get them out. Okay, you're gonna have to bring them to me then, Luke. Okay, let's take... Yeah, I don't want to go that way. I don't really want to go back to the derelict prison, but... I guess that's the direction we're going to go. You hear a temple choir and venture into the forest to see what monks are doing in this forbidding land. An odd sight awaits you in a clearing. Several wandering monks, identically dressed, stand with their arms raised to the sky, singing prayers. There's also a small company of guards. Their commander comes out to greet you. His name is Tristan. Okay, here. I think this no, 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 no. Is the windshield. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, hey, Luke. The parts need to be. But you didn't get a snap type model? No, that was the only seven. Seven dollars. Okay, yeah. This is gonna all have to be glued then. Um. It's an F4F. Yeah, I, see, I can see that. Okay, I'm gonna have to build this kit with you then. Okay. Okay? So I'll wait till we're done with that then. Okay, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it today. But, yeah, we're gonna have to build this together, buddy. Because I can't really... I don't so even know maybe, if I... Uh, so maybe, uh... <sighs> so maybe, like, the weekend project? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if I have any model glue right now, so, uh, yeah, I'll have to look for my model glue. All right? Okay, can you go put this stuff back in the box? You, you do have instructions in the box, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So put it back there. I'll look at it in a bit, okay? Tristan satisfies your curiosity. Laughing, he says that in the end times, when the reaping is raging, you should abandon your worldly possessions, take to the road, and help the poor souls who are losing faith. He rests his hand on the hilt of his sword and casually asks if you're ready to praise the gods and ask them for forgiveness. Will you join the sacred choir? Taking closer look at the monks and their guards, conclude that they're crazy heretics. And like that will be at your throat if you offend them. Perhaps you should oblige and sing a prayer or two. Worst comes to worst, you can always run away. <sighs> Alright, let's try saying a prayer and I'd like to get away, f get out without combat here. You nod to Tristan and join the singing monks. After praying for several minutes, you feel much better. Your body is refreshed, scabs and bruises melted away. You thank Tristan and continue your journey. Hey, cool. That actually healed all our injuries then. A man in ragged clothes sits beside the road. You try to ride past, but he suddenly leaps up, clutches your stirrup, and mumbles something, frantically pointing at a roadside boulder. Bacon eyes, foam rimming his lips, it's clearly out of his mind. You decipher one word of his blabbering. Dig! Going forward, take the poor wretched other people, or dig. Um, we'll dig. At a whim, you tell your party to dismount and dig under the boulder. 
Fu leaps about happily. It takes an hour to realize that you're wasting your time. The looks you get from your companions tell you they agree. A peasant approaches you. Drawing closer, he bows and introduces himself. Forgive me, kind master. Would you mind me taking Lure home? I'm Stern from the Ironmonger's village, just a couple of leagues to the west. This fellow here is our village fool. He likes this boulder for some reason. He just cannot stay away from it. You regard Lure with a mixture of frustration and pity. Next, you face the peasant. My name is Thorn Brennan. Go ahead, take him wherever you want. But dare I say, you're not watching him closely enough, Stern. Stern gestures helplessly. He's cunning. This one, never mind his sanity. He's like his father. He was a captain of the guard and came to our village from the city when he retired. His ailing son came with him. We look after Lure out of respect for his father. A very good and decent man. You nod, and as Stern takes Lur's arm, Lur turns suddenly, slipping something metal into your hand. When the fool and his guardian disappear down the road, you examine the gift. It's a captain's insignia with a Strix. I guess that wasn't a waste of time after all, then. A stranger appears from the roadside bush and singles signals for you to approach. You're Birkin, aren't you? He whispers as you approach. I'm Danelle. I've got something for sale. Just things I've found. You interested? You wonder about the provenance of these found things. Danelle could, turn, could well be a common marauder. On the other hand, many have turned to marauding in these harsh times. Danelle's goods help you survive. Is their origin a real concern? Well, we're not going to rob him, so for sure, let's see what he's got. You nod to Danelle, and he disappears into the bush. He returns with a cloth bundle and unwraps it at the roadside. Inside are his finds. useful things here. Yeah. That's worth it. some cards. All right, I think we're good. Ride forth. You nudge your horse forward and hear rustling in the bushes. When you turn around, Danelle is gone. Well, this will get us to the watchtower anyway. Your company scrambles to the highway so you can make it to Opacum in time. You've nearly run into Frisian horse patrols a couple of times already. You need to sneak past them if you want to beat them to the fortress. You haven't even traveled a league on the highway when a band of Frisians marches into view. You signal your companions to turn around, but the vanguard of the Frisian army appears on the road behind you, blocking your retreat. 
your daughter looks at you as the reality of the situation sinks in. Dad, what shall we do now? She cries. Uh, well, I guess we're gonna have to fight. We shall fight. There's no other choice. We'll have to smash through the soldiers blocking the road to Opicum. They're fewer. We can handle them. Is pretty much it. Well, we're gonna have to take him. Right off we go. This is not going to be fun. The only good news is, here is these guys are going to have to walk a little bit to um, actually come hit us. good news is they don't have a lot of health. I had more ranged people.
guys have buffs now. going to be inconvenient. Get her out of the way.
That's not the person he was supposed to go after. But didn't kill her, so you know what? It's fine. This is starting to upset me. Having crushed the Frisian detachment barring the way, you managed to escape at the last moment. You're lucky that the Frisian cavalry was held up by the vanguard, but now it's on your heels. Right, well, best to get a move on then. There's barely a day left until you reach Opicum, but that doesn't mean you should let your guard down just yet. You can already make out a watchtower with a remote patrol in the distance. You still want to make sure that it's safe. You dismount and approach the tower from the forest. You quickly realize that you've made the right decision. You make out a tree trunk blocking the road ahead. You return to your horses, only to be greedy by a only to be greeted by a Frisian patrol. Realizing their ambush was fruitless, they have decided to try their luck in direct combat. Alright, here we go again then. Let's do some quick party management here. an ability point for score there. Alright, well I think Gleed is out, Sop is in, and let's put Helm in. Try to keep people from dying. <sighs> These odds are getting worse.
gonna make him come to me, I think. Basically, just use my ranged advantage. Do as much damage as I can off the bat. And try to beat them up when they get close. first though. So that's how that's going to be, huh? Well, fine then. out of the equation. Seventeen and a stun. Oh! 
Got him anyway. Yeah, I can't land a kill shot there. Just enough armor to make that annoying. So... Now we just gotta see who can one-shot him. Perfect. without anybody getting injured. After the battle ceases, you look around the hill where Frisians once hid, mostly out of instinct, rather than an expectation of finding something valuable. Your curiosity is rewarded, however. You find a man, tied up with a bag over his head. Frisian captives should be set free, whoever they may be. Removing the bag from his head, you're surprised to discover it's your old pal Stein. He is just as surprised to see you. You cut the sergeant's ropes, take the gag out of his mouth, and give him some time to catch his breath. Stein! Can't believe my eyes. What are you doing it here? If we made it to Albius? Hmm. Can't believe mine either. 
Thorn! I'm so happy. You saved my life, damn it. Did you see the Northerners closing in? I lost my entire patrol and got captured. They'll lay siege to Opacum soon, I tell you. Mm. What about Stock at Victi? <laughs> Trying to keep his spirits high. Then his son comes along and tries to issue orders in Stockett's name, so the Count has to keep the dullard in check. Sorry for talking that way about your brother-in-law, Thorn. Hmm. Oh, I have far worse words in store for him. Best to not worry about it. I'll admit, though, I'm not particularly keen on seeing him again. What's going on in Opicum? What do you think? Everyone's preparing for a siege. Nobody has ever conquered Opacum, though, so there's nothing to fear. Uh. True. Opacum's bastions have never seen Frisian flags. The Frisians be there soon? <laughs> Don't know the exact time or how many. Only one thing is clear. The first three legions are already on the highway to Opacum was hurrying to the fortress when I stumbled upon their patrol. Hope they don't beat us there. Uh. Three legions may seem like a small army, but their numbers aren't sufficient to conquer Opacum. Guessing they'll lay siege until reinforcements arrive. So let's go! Opacum is only a couple of leagues away. At first, it seems like there's not a single person on the highway. Stein squints, scrutinizing the fortress. Curses! Frisian legions are already on Opacum's doorstep. The cavalry is leading the vanguard. You fancy your chances at making it to Opacum without alerting the Frisians, but you conclude that they are slim. To the gate, now! We have to beat them there before all the entrances are blocked. Your daughter is doubtful. What if they can't open the gate in time? Or don't open it at all? What if they think it's some Frisian ploy? Pull Glita aside. Have to risk it. If we lose any more time, the Northerners will cut us off from Opacum. We'll meet the Frisians by that very gate. There's a steep incline there that'll force them to dismount. Your squad darts to the fort, and the Frisian horse patrol predictably gives chase. The northerners can't intercept you in time. You jump from your horses at Opacum's doorstep, and wait for the inevitable battle to unfold. You look around the fortress walls and see the archers awaiting the orders. They're in no particular hurry to shoot you, or the Frisians. That's some good discipline. Not a single arrow fired until the order is given. Well, we'll manage on our own. Once more into the breach, lads. Just... Quick party management here. I think we'll stick with this group then, since it worked so well last time. Or well enough, anyway. Same kind of scenario again. One less pike man, one more crossbow.
Let's just let him come to me. start doing is trying to remember to use Ramland to buff people right off the bat. Swordsman guys want to just spend some time making each other pretty. Great, they can do that. Start taking a couple of guys down here. sooner. Seriously?
That's the way it's gonna be, huh? lose him one way or the other, so might as well make a dent. Okay, we can try to stun him and hope the archer goes for a different target. Or we might just get away with this. Okay. Great. Sure, you guys do that. Battle is over. 
You look around until you find Glita. You nod approvingly and sheathe your sword. Frisian legions are already lining up within arrow's range of the gate. Opicum's siege has begun. You hear the creaking of gigantic hinges and heavy clanking. Heavy chains roar and metal reels shriek as Opicum's gate opens. Better late than never. At least you've made it. Everything else is of little importance now. the siege there. Opicum's gate closes. Frisian legions fall into rank at the edge of the archer's range. At least you're already inside. You're approached by guards. If your name is Thorn Brennan, then this fort's commander, Stock at Victi, is waiting for you says their sergeant. He hopes you haven't come alone, but I've no idea who else he's expecting. You should know, though, right? You nod and turn to catch Glita's glance. She's still shivering after the last battle. Macht can barely keep himself on his feet. I know who to bring to stock at Victi, you say. But first, I need you to send someone to fetch the healer. His grandson may need some help. The guard's face grows pale. He sends someone to find a healer and issues a few more orders. You don't utter a word and proceed when he beckons you. Right now all you need is a bit of respite, because soon you will have to face the northerners laying siege to Opicum. But there's no escaping an encounter with your father-in-law. You set foot inside the spacious cell. Stock at Victi lunges forward, hugs Glita and Macht, and cries for the healer. He then carefully places his exhausted grandson on a bunk. Stock at then leaves Glita with your son and pulls you aside. Glita, ye gods! Macht, my boy! Where's your arm? How could it be? Come here, lie down. The healer's already on his way, carrying all his potions. It'll be all right. The important thing is you're alive. Thorn, never in my life did I think I'd be so indebted to you. I don't need thanks, Stockett. My children being alive is enough. After the reaping took Leaky, they've been the, my reason for living. Never been my favorite son-in-law, Thorn. But you're quite the accomplished warrior. With the enemy ready to storm our home, it's hardly the appropriate time to have a discourse about death. Opacum is our shared home now. There will be a feast in the throne room today. Consider this your invitation. We can discuss everything else afterwards. King Trig now rules in Opacum? I may command the garrison, but I play by the king's rules, or the prince's. Hyborg has fallen, Thorn, and the king takes refuge in this fortress. He is pretty mad at you. I hope I don't have to throw you in the dungeon. And I guess I have no choice but to go. Maybe I'll ask the king to consider putting me on Opicum's primary bastion instead of the dungeon. Having a feast while under siege? That is King Trig's will. He wants to celebrate our heroes in such a way that future generations never outshine them. And to boost morale, I guess. I don't think we'll have to wait long before the storm strikes. Feasts don't really boost morale. They mainly just weigh down your stomach. Still, I'll be there, Stockett. What else, what must I do? Now, 
Nothing. Prince Ho, whose escape from Albius was no surprise even to a man in my position, has been reunited with the king. I hope that's grounds enough for clemency. Still, try to control yourself. Controlling oneself is much easier than controlling the swing of a sword. You don't have to worry. May I go now? I'll leave Mact here. I'll give him proper treatment. I'd do the same for Glita, but she won't sit still for that long. I can see it in her eyes. My daughter, Leaky Brennan, is dead. I didn't even get the chance to embrace her. My lineage is in grave danger. Bran Victi is hardly interested in preserving it. Bran Victi tried to murder your grandchildren, Stockett. You'll have to stop him somehow if you want to preserve your lineage. If he's in the fort, you'll have to lock him up. In the dungeon, your chambers, or wherever you can. Just keep his madness at bay. <clears throat> I can handle my own son without your help. Now stay in this fortress and don't let Trigg see you until it's time. I'll send someone to arrange everything. You can go now. <sighs> and let me talk to my son privately. The siege is fierce. It may be the last time I see him. Leda hugs her grandfather and pulls him aside. You approach Macht, who's clearly not happy being sentenced to bed rest. Oh. I hope you're not trying to get rid of me. Be back in action in a couple of days. We'll see. Please forget about breaking my arm. I have no idea how sorry I was for you back then. Never meant to get rid of you. Why did you move to Albius three years ago? Bran Victi wouldn't have been able to harm you. Why do you leave me in Oda all alone? I needed to talk to you so badly. I left so you wouldn't feel like you had to prove anything to anyone. You're a grown man now. Have a request. Lock the door to the cell while you're here. You're in danger as long as Bran Victi's in the fortress. Felt sorry for you too. Alright. You look after yourself. And Glita. Tell her to check on me once in a while. I could sure use a honey toffee. Or even a slice of dry Burkhanen bread with a clove of garlic. Only if the siege drags out. If not, we'll drop by together. Stop looking like cornered prey. It's time to be a predator. Get well now. You leave stock at Victi's chambers with Glita. The corridors are deserted and silent, almost as if there's no siege at all. You hear footsteps and clench your sword's hilt. Who knows who's running around the besieged fortress? A moment later, a figure wearing a vandal robe bursts from the corner. You're surprised, but then realize that it's Patagang. He valiantly marches toward Count Victi's cell, skimming through some papers he's holding. He raises his head and notices you, then stops and breaks into a toothy smile. Hey, I'm so happy to see that you're well. Rask made me your father-in-law's assistant, by the way. I haven't worked so much in my whole life, damn it! Where would we be without Rask? In any case, I'm glad to see you here in good health, Patagang. Can you tell me the latest? Uh -huh. Of course, my friend. I think you're already aware of the Frisians and Prince Trigg's arrival. I think he wants to talk to you, but meeting with Frisians is a higher priority at the moment. A couple of curious individuals are already looking for you, as it is. Who else is after me? I understand why King Trigg already holds a grudge against me. I've already talked to Stockett. As for his son, that's their business. Who else wants to see me? Philia, a daughter of Unda from Ursus. She's almost always hanging around the men here. There's also Hopper Rowley, 
The one sent after you, back in Albius. Last saw him by the wall, so he's seen you arrive. I've got nowhere to hide now. No intention of hiding. When someone wants to talk, it's awfully rude to turn them down. So, no one else from Albius made it to Opicum? Oh, I almost forgot. Your house's old servant also wandered around here. Tenor, crying a river over the death of your wife. May your soul rest in peace. Count Victi hired him as his servant again for old time's sake. Haven't seen everyone else. There's a lot of people in the fort. Can't keep your eye on everyone. Told you everything I know, friend. Now excuse me. I've kept the Count waiting long enough. See you around. Alright, well, everyone's uninjured. Alright, well, let's see what Philia wants to discuss. You arrive at the square. Amongst all the commotion, you spot the motionless figure of a woman standing near the men here. Looks like it really is Philia. You should at least thank her for protecting your daughter. Suddenly, the square is bustling. You hear the clinking of armor and the nervous neighing of horses. A cavalry unit, the festively clad temple servant in the lead, passes you. I have to deliver the news and our plea for help to the Primarch the monk assures the guard. I don't care if Gels are trying to lay siege to Opcum. The power of the Temple of Divine Retribution protects me better than any army. For some reason, this temple servant conjures feelings of repulsion and danger in you. you. Try to bury them. After all, the monk is only looking after himself, same as most temple servants do. Probably hopes the horses are fast enough to get him out of the besieged fort. temple servant catches your glance and squints, as if trying to remember if he's seen you somewhere. Finally, he breaks into a smile. The fort's got nothing to fear with such brave protectors at its helm. Submit yourself to the will of the gods. See the monk off, cross the square, and walk up to the men here. Made it to Opicum after all, Thorn. I'm glad I was right about you. Philia, thank you for protecting my daughter. How may I be of service to you? Mm -hmm. It was I who came here to help you. To warn you of the danger to you and your people. To tell you why you're all here. Consider me my mother's messenger, if you will. danger are we talking about? Someone among those called forth to this fortress is to be sacrificed. It's all that matters. Opacom is the Reaper's final obstacle. If it falls, the one bearing the mark will be destroyed. That's the whole reason you were looking for me? Just to tell me about some convoluted prophecy? Mark this. Sacrifice that one sacrifice compared to th the thousands of lives being lost. Mm -hmm. The sacrifice will awaken one of those who governs the men here's powers, and he's stronger than all of the reapers put together. <clears throat> so someone will have to bear the mark and be sacrificed, which will summon someone even more powerful than the reapers, in the hope that doing so would help the northerners capture Opacum. I, am I supposed to believe that even for a second? Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to believe, only to understand. And remember, understanding will come later. As for the nebulous nature of the prophecy, well, its outcome is uncertain. Had I met you a year ago, I'd have said you were out of your damn mind. But I saw a lot of shit during my trip from Albius. I will remember your words. What does this all have to do with your mother? 
My mother taught me everything I know, though I still struggle to be even a fraction as wise. I'm just a good healer, and a bit of a witch. Nothing more. Wait. Those bracelets you have. They're just like my daughter's. An enchantress by the name of Chilla gave them to her. My mother goes by many names. Chilla is but one of them. Well, I never. All right, if your mother is so wise, did she perhaps tell you how it all ends? Is there a chance of survival? If memory serves, your mother was an exceptional seer, wasn't she? I asked her about that myself. She didn't provide a definitive answer. Just said that there's hope. Although we might also bear witness to the end of the world. Nothing is certain, even for her. <clears throat> Don't even know what to make of it. We're either the masters of fate, or forever trapped within its confines. Still, knowing Chilla, such mysteries are quite common. Is that all you have to say? Then you'll have to excuse me. <clears throat> I hope you've deciphered my mother's warning to you. How should I know what this is all about? Reapers, prophecies, marks, and other nonsense? Hope it becomes clearer with time. Okay. Go talk to Hopper. Good to see you're in fine health, Thorn. You actually made it to Obicum. What do you expect? Want us to share this joy or something? I want you to keep your daughter safe. I've been following you since this reaping started, trying to understand how you resisted the reaper. And now I do, having seen your daughter. It wasn't just your valor, but also the power she holds deep within. Does my... Yeah, where does Glida's power come from? comes from you and your wife, special people in your bloodline, or traumatic events etched deep into your mind, too, leave you permanently marked. Such marks of fate, both good and bad, can be passed on to your children. I am but a soldier. Sure, I've had my share of trials along the way. I've looked death in the eye many times. You even embraced me once when I was in the veil. So that's what it is. Lena was born a year after that. Never thought something like that would affect her. No one's gonna touch her. Mm. Hey, May Thorn. I can't promise that I'll be able to fight off the Reapers, but I'm not letting your daughter out of my sight. Mm. The Reapers, you say? Yeah, I can't hold my own against them while protecting her, too. Why risk your life for Galita, though? Let me put it this way. Don't ever give an enemy what they want from you. Makes sense. But to me, Galita isn't just some weapon to be used against the reaping. It's my whole life. I appreciate the offer, but I'll protect my daughter myself. Mm. I only want to help. You don't have to put all your trust in me. What else do you know about the Reapers? Hmm. A thousand years ago, Outlanders invaded your world. Most of their masters didn't survive the transition, and those who did had to sacrifice themselves. Before they died, however, they managed to plant menhirs to serve as beacons. Think of the Reapers as the guard commanders for those Outlanders, with Enses as their soldiers. <coughs> That's some legend. Never heard anything like it, but I always had a bunch of those had a hunch those men here in the temple were bad news. So what do the outlanders want exactly? To ravage our lands? To quench their bloodlust? To reclaim the men here? Maybe they simply mean to exterminate us and seize our territory. Mm. Indeed. They want to destroy you and take your land. 
They'd have done so long ago. The stars weren't favorably aligned. Not all the men here are at full strength. And their rulers are in deep slumber or dead. Your lot aren't exactly easy to kill as well. So, you're one of them, aren't you? Mm. I'm a rat that fled their sh sinking ship. I'm not one of them. And I don't want your lands destroyed, Thorn. Though that's entirely possible. The Outlander's world is dead. Burned to ash. Perhaps this world's fate will be the same. There's nowhere to run now for any of us. Worried about saving your skin? That must be why you don't want the Reapers getting a hold of Gleda's hidden power. Alright, time to go talk later. There may not be a next time. You sure you don't want to ask anything else? First, I need to figure out if I believe you. Too many eerie and terrifying truths have presented themselves to me lately. I understand. It's hard, realizing that all you know of the world's inner workings doesn't amount to anything. I won't push it. Words don't mean much to you anyway, right? You're a man of action. You'll want to see what I can do first. Exactly. It's a deal, then. I've got to go now. Goodbye. Talk to Tenor. And who do we have here? Tenor! Well, I'll be. What are you doing here? Didn't think I'd see you again. <laughs> I didn't think so either. Been saying my goodbyes every evening, not actually expecting to wake up the next morning. But I serve. Been doing it my whole life, and it's what I'm doing here too. Serving an old master of mine. Count Stock at Victi. Is he treating you well at least? Why would he need to harm me? Dust his cell and that's it. He's got younger servants for all his other needs. Dusting requires some energy too. Can't say anything about Leaky. What's there to talk about? That's his daughter. This little glimmer of hope, though. Never said a word about her. Cried, though. She's been crying in front of our house, by Quina and Leaky's graves. Never uttered a bad word about you. Thanks, I appreciate it. I myself don't feel like cursing him anymore. Heard anything about his son? Bran, you mean? Not one good thing. I'd tell you, but the Count has ordered my silence. Whether it's about his hiding place or where he was last seen. Well, that's natural. It's his son, after all. So the scoundrel has to hide, after all. Guess he got his just desserts. Good luck, Tenor. <laughs> I don't believe in luck now. But you still have my deepest gratitude, Master Thorn. Maybe it would have gone on if it hadn't been stopped so abruptly. Well, doesn't matter now. Look after the Count, Tenor. All right? I know you're past your prime, but they say you're quite deft with that dagger of yours. Bron Victi won't spare his father if he comes here. <laughs> Count does pity Bron, though. He's restless. Always talking about him. Especially since he learned that Bran took the town guard's wages with him. Says Bran couldn't do it, then turns around and says the opposite. Well, what can you do? It's terrible to lose a daughter. It's even worse to lose a living son. Tell me if you ever need something, Tenor. I'm always ready to help. We can go look at the gals. So let's go shopping first. I don't think 
I need an amulet. That's definitely helpful. She'll take a speed potion. Go look at the gals now. The melancholic cry of Gellian pipes can be heard near Opacum. The Highlanders have encircled the fortress. Glada touches your hand. Dad, I think I'm feeling the same magic that led the gals to Opacum. It's like horrifying music, but without any sound. The gals emanate their own hatred too. I can feel it. Where did it come from? Where does a nation's resentment come from, you wonder? They harbor it little by little. The Gales' villages are quite small and stay reclusive for most of the year. They practice a harsh way of life. Every village is its own clan, its own family. All are subservient to the family's chief. Not much breathing room. Where do Gels channel all the pent-up energy and enthusiasm that accumulates over time? Gladys seems at a loss. So you're saying they buy and sell slaves, ravage caravans, and kill travelers because they've got a lot of pent-up energy and enthusiasm? Of course not, laugh. Take the Paleans, for example. To them, pillaging is just like hunting or fishing is to a Birkin. For a Gel, Every skirmish, robbery, and battle is like a continuation of a never-ending war. One that's claimed his family and burned his village to the ground. Doesn't matter if it was two or three centuries ago and the last battle scars have been healed for ten generations. But what can be done? Khan has been trying to pacify Gels for eons. And here they are at Opacum's doorstep. They already rule the entire Vandal Forest. What should we do? Kill everyone you're supposed to, but don't touch the innocents. Although, those gals blowing their pipes outside the castle were also innocent. Once. Why so quiet all of a sudden? You know, you'll only grow up once you realize that some questions don't have an answer. How is depressing. All right, can't avoid this feast any longer. Time tenses up like a string of a bard's lute. Frisian pipes can be heard outside. The bell clangs up in the tower. The time of the feast is nigh, and it might be the last one of your life. You look around. Quite a lot of guests, it seems. You notice stock at Victi under the castle's arch. The old man doesn't seem to want to leave you alone. Well, having a companion might not be so bad. You've never been to the throne room in Opacum. Friga was built by Gabonan kings to rule the Vandal Forest, while Opacum was meant to be the linchpin for all of Burkana. None of it came to fruition, though. Then, Burkana turned its throne room into a dining room. Well, this ought to be an experience to remember. If you live long enough to reminisce, that is. Guards open the tall doors before stock at victory. And you hear King Treek's furious cry. He stands in the center of the empty throne room, fists clenched and a soldier's corpse at his feet. Upon seeing you, he's filled with anger. get down on one knee and remain still. Shek's body, pierced by an arrow, 
similar to those used by Bran's mercenaries, is at Trigg's feet. Bran's father stands beside you. A wrathful king stands before you, one who has just lost one of his best men. You have nothing to say. Huh? No, actually, we have words, apparently. I'm at your service, Your Majesty. I've no doubt about that, Thorn. But I'm more curious as to the identity of my guard commander's assassin. He was killed shortly after I sent him after you. And what's with the arrow? Stuck it. What's going on in that fortress of yours? <clears throat> I have the whole fortress upended. All of it. That scum will never escape retribution. Should we call off the feast? It might be too dangerous for you to have it here, your majesty all in danger, but I won't call off the feast. No scoundrel will change my mind. I laugh in my enemy's face. For now, I want to talk with Thorn Brennan. So, Captain Brennan, have you found what you were looking for? Hmm. Father, don't forget your promise. Remember everything. Believe me, I'm quite capable of weighing all the factors before arriving at my decision. No harm will come to the blameless. Captain, you've been given the opportunity to show your loyalty on Opicum's ramparts. Come to this fortress to defend it, not hide. Isn't that so? It is. And for this opportunity, I'm deeply grateful, Your Majesty. I have never hidden, and I never will. Talk again, Thorn Brennan. You've still got so much to tell me. Consider the coming feast a kind of funeral. We're holding it while those who will die are still alive. Well, at least some of them. The king walks away, leaving his son with you. Hode's lips are tight, his brows knit together. By all signs, he is very determined. To do what? You wish you knew. Oh. I'm glad that you and your daughter made it to Opicum. I hold no grudge against you. Just tell me one thing. My father wants to keep me on a short leash, it seems. I am of a different opinion. Still in need of a trusted warrior who's good with throwing knives and won't get cold feet? Won't tempt the king, or I always need good warriors. I always need good warriors. Oh. Perfect. I'm still hoed then, and you're my captain. I won't tell my father just in case, but I'll join you after the feast. You remain in the dining hall and watch the servants take Shek's body away. They mop up his blood and set the tables with assorted plates of food. Guests with bleak faces then fill the dining hall. No one touches their food. Gleda takes a seat by your side. Gleda shivers and rubs her shoulders. Dad, it's Bron Victi's bolt, unique to his bodyguards. But where could he be hiding? Why'd he do this? Shek was his enemy and could have accused him of stealing, you tell Gleda. As for hiding... Opicum is riddled with secret passages. No one knows them all. Bran has been coming here with his father since he was a boy. Your mother told me that Bran liked to ambush people with the contents of his chamber pot, but no one ever caught him doing it. Let's have a closer look at the guests. Commanders, veterans, and officials from the King's entourage file into the hall. They're not just nervous. Many seem to be suffering from headaches. You're joined by Hopper, who's just as alarmed. It's bad enough that Shek has been killed. Something is amiss in this fortress. It's bad enough Shek has been killed. But now they're saying that Stokovicti's son had a hand in stealing the funds from Ursus. He might be hiding here in Opicum. 
To make matters worse, I have a splitting headache. It may be caused by another's magic, but I'm not sure. Hopper looks around the throne room and shrugs. Maybe I just need to sleep off this headache. Conversation drowns in the sound of trumpets. Enough chit-chat, say. Get up. The king is here. The doors open again to let in King Trig. He looks morose and doesn't immediately assume his seat at the table out of the table and deliver his speech as usual. Instead, he takes time to walk around the hall with his entourage, shaking hands and embracing each of his guests. All signs indicate that the feast is a farewell ritual. Put Glita behind Hopper. You take Glita by the shoulders and carefully move her behind Hopper. In times of trouble, there's no need to draw the king's attention. Glita looks at you and whispers her discomfort with the situation. She feels like something's about to happen. She looks at you, then at Trig again. The king draws closer. You place your hand on the hilt of your sword. What can possibly go wrong during a feast, if all the guests can be trusted? The king approaches. When he reaches you, he stops for a moment, but does not offer his hand. We still need to talk, Thorn Brennan, he says before moving on. You freeze in a courteous bow. The king has shown you that you've fallen from his grace. Everyone wonders what will happen to you now. You expect the worst and dire thoughts overwhelm you, and your own fate is not even the reason. The king resumes his place on the throne and signals for the feast to commence. The guests grow more talkative and merry the more they drink but you can still feel the king's piercing gaze upon you. Luckily, the feast doesn't last long. The room falls silent as the king prepares to deliver an important message. The king rises, pointing at the stain on the floor. In this very spot, a treacherous villain killed my friend Shek, my guard commander. Today, I lament him just as I would any of you. Or how you'll lament me. Just depends on who runs out of luck first. And yet, this feast isn't a funeral banquet, Tree continues. It's an occasion to meet new friends and hear important news. Help won't come. We should brace ourselves for anything. Hope come is thought to be impregnable, and our scouts report only moderate numbers of Frisians. But it's also reap time. Aubrican troops have been mobilized, the king bellows. They protect our homes from the Enzes and other abominations. Opacum is our frontier. It has never been taken, and shall not be taken while we live. The feast is over, King Trig announces as the cheering subsides. Everyone return to their defensive positions. You too, Thorn. Hey folks, Aaron here. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you want more, please hit the subscribe button, like it, all that stuff, and don't forget the alerts for when I post new videos. New videos go up every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8 a.m. Central. Vlogs and gaming content. You can also find me at my blog, stickstoriesscotch.blogspot.com. My Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash shadowcaster, and a lot of other writing over on Mariner's Rock. Hope you'll be back next time. Until then, remember, keep your knees in the breeze and the shiny side up. And now, I got a ride. <laughs>